Welcome back, Smackheads. Union Smack Tenant Talks returns for issue 5, and as I record this, it is November the 30th, Black Friday, and I know you may be getting this a little later, the end of the following week perhaps, but I have been surfing the internet for Black Friday deals. There really isn't much here in the UK, I have to add. If you're in America, I know you have a lot of discounts and, and things over there. But here in the United Kingdom, very little this year. It's been very, very poor. So I've been doing that. I've been putting some of the finishing touches to my NXT UK book. And I am away for a few days after I record this. So you have my sincere apologies that this is late. If some of the news is outdated that you're about to hear, then apologies again. But, you know, we do our best. Me and Travis, we do our very best. I edit this. I put this together. Travis edits and puts together the NXT UK Omnibus, which this time is five episodes long. And we both work at the same time. So... You get us, but in in small bites, as and when our schedules allow. Now, just a quick word before we get cracking on issue 5 of Tenant Talks. NXT UK Omnibus. December's will be the last one before Christmas. That will be the episode covering episodes 66 to 70 of NXT UK. That should be up on the channel shortly, if it isn't already. Let's not forget I am recording this ahead of time, before I record that even. And there will be some other Christmassy treats from myself and Travis throughout the month of December, including a Survivor Series 1996 retro review. I'm sure we're going to do at least one more retro review after that, before the big day. And of course you've got our Christmas messages coming the week of Christmas. That is all to come, but I'm sure you're bored of Christmas by now. It's on every television station, it's on every radio channel you listen to. You, you pop to the shops, you hear Slade, you hear Wizard. Wish it could be Christmas every day. So I'm sure you're bored of that. So let's leave Christmas behind for now, because these are the main stories on this week's Tenant Talks. Mustache mounting and British Strong Style member Tyler Bate conducted an interview with Catch Club on November the 14th to talk about joining WWE, NXT UK and where he feels his future lies. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire interview because it was a lengthy one, but I have sifted through some of the transcripts. I have taken some stuff from wrestlinginc.com thank you very much to the guys over there you do a great job and this is what tyler bate had to say on a few subjects on signing with wwe in 2007 tyler bate said this i was very excited but at the same time very curious because there wasn't really anything set in stone of what we were going to be doing nxt uk didn't exist it was just a whole bunch of British guys getting signed all at once and going into the unknown and just kind of improvising our way through WWE and just hoping that one day the hard work pays off. I think it's safe to say that the hard work has paid off for British Strong Style, for, for Tyler Bate, more for Pete Dunne in a way, but uh, yeah, I think, I think it has paid off there. On his future... In NXT, Tyler Bate had this to say. As far as NXT UK goes, Trent and I still have to get the NXT UK Tag Team Championships. I feel like that's something we should probably get done, since I like to think of us as pioneers of NXT UK. So I feel like it would be only right if one day we held the NXT UK Tag Team titles, and maybe we would be the first team to hold both NXT and NXT UK Tag Team titles. This is coming. It has to be. You, you, you know, you can't have a team like Mustache Mountain and never have them ascend the the doubles mountain. 
I firmly believe, as you will probably hear in the NXT UK Omnibus review, that Tyler Bates' career as a single star in NXT UK has just about peaked. It peaked at TakeOver Cardiff against Walter. I don't see where else he can go without a mid-card title as a single star. So it would be natural after... After he falls to Jordan Devlin, which has to happen. It's coming up in Blackpool. After he loses to Jordan Devlin, if Mustache Mountain chase the titles, win the titles. And then, as me and Travis have been saying for months and months now, Trent Seven finally turns on Tyler Bates and they have a blood feud. And then Trent Seven sends Tyler Bates off to NXT which I'm assuming is where Bate is going to end up because what else is left for him in NXT UK? On the possibility of moving to the United States to compete on Raw, SmackDown or NXT, Bate had this to say. I'm always open to the idea, but I feel like at the moment I've had so much left to give NXT UK that I want to be able to give as much to NXT UK as I can before I move on to NXT or Raw or SmackDown. Now, yes, I've just said that Tyler Bates' future in NXT UK is probably limited. And he will more than likely move on to the States before the end of 2020. That is probably a given. However, if I was Tyler Bates and I was watching Survivor Series... Would I want to move to NXT UK or the main roster after seeing how poorly and disgustingly Walter was booked on Survivor Series night? If you didn't see it, you're one of the few. He was part of Team NXT and undefeated, I might say, since his debut in January. Walter was eliminated in three minutes by Drew McIntyre. Now... There's many people who will say many things on this, like, well, Drew, Drew McIntyre's a main star. He needed to look huge, etc., etc. But I will say this, and I'll, then I'll leave it. Walter is a champion. He is the United Kingdom champion. You are relying on Walter to carry the brand, the brand name, and help sell a pay-per-view on January the 12th, which we'll get into in just a minute. With all that in mind, and with so much on this man's shoulders, you job him out in three minutes. Now, I'm not calling Drew McIntyre an unworthy you know, conqueror at all. Drew McIntyre is a hugely talented individual. But for me, Drew McIntyre isn't Walter. And it looked absolutely disgraceful to have Walter pinned in that amount of time. And let's not forget that Walter has been so against coming to WWE's main roster that he turned down a contract with WWE and NXT to come to NXT UK because he didn't like how the main roster was being booked and handled and he didn't want to move away from Germany. And after all of that, they don't even go to the effort of saying to him, look, you're one of the, the best in the world today. This is what we can offer you on a main roster if you ever chose to, you know, give it a try. All they showed him was that he would be jobbed out. A man of his talent and stature would be jobbed out in a few minutes. And to be honest, I'm I'm surprised Walter went along with it because if that had been me, I'd have been straight out there. Back to the point, however. Um, if you were Tyler Bate and you'd seen how Walter was treated and you'd seen Pete Dunne's mediocre booking in NXT thus far, you know, would you need any more excuse as to why you wouldn't want to, you know, be called up? I mean, honestly, would you want to go from the heady heights of NXT UK, and Tyler Bate has been, like, right up there at the forefront of NXT UK since it began, to, you know being in triple threat matches with Damian Priest and Killian Dane, and then losing to a man who was half killed the night before on a major pay-per-view. Would you want that? Because I fucking wouldn't. I absolutely wouldn't. Sorry, pardon my French, but no. 
As I alluded to earlier, um, Tyler Bay is expected to battle Jordan Devlin at NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2 on January the 12th. That has not been officially announced yet, but I do expect it to be in the coming weeks. On November the 15th, IPW UK, that is International Pro Wrestling UK, for anyone who has not previously heard of it, announced via their Facebook and Twitter pages that after a long and illustrious history that has lasted 15 years plus, they would be ceasing to be a live events promotion at the end of 2019. For those of you sitting there asking what that could mean, then the official statement given by IPW UK said that after several internal discussions, it has been decided that it is the appropriate time to draw an end to live events. Therefore, the IPW World Championship will be defended for the last time at Undisputed 3, taking place at the Moat Hotel in Maidstone on December the 15th. They plan to celebrate IPW's successful years of live events on December the 15th. Uh, the statement also declared that this was not the end of IPW or IPW UK and its rich history will continue to be promoted and celebrated into the future. On top of all that, there will be, apparently a major announcement regarding the future of IPW and that will be made on December the 4th in Milton Keynes which is literally just down the road from me. Now for those of you not familiar with IPW UK we'll go into that in just a moment but this this came out the blue. This came as a real shock because for some people they didn't even know IPW UK was still in business. It has been working in the background, really, of British wrestling for several years now. In 2005, 2006, you could find IPW UK DVDs. You could find them, you know, on what was becoming the internet, social media, etc. You could read about them on the internet. But in the last few years, they've faded away into the background. They've not been as popular as they once were. And that is has probably contributed, I should say, to their decision to not so much close the doors, but cease holding live events. Now, IPW UK do not have a television deal in the United Kingdom. Like I said, they've been working in the background of British wrestling for years now. No one's really heard of them unless you're a, you know, a diehard independent wrestling fan and attend the, the shows in Milton Keynes and Maidstone and everywhere else. So they haven't had the revenue or the exposure a television show would bring, which means the gates have probably dwindled. And obviously the onset of NXT UK has meant that there's, there's less and less call for independent British wrestling. Now you might say that's, that's bullshit. What are you talking about, Matt? But this comes hot off the heels of Defiant Wrestling closing its doors as well, largely due to poor ticket sales and a decline in, in business. Now, Defiant Wrestling, for those not in the know, was much, much bigger than IPW UK in Great Britain. You know, Defiant Wrestling had its own YouTube channel. Defiant Wrestling had its own DVDs. Defiant Wrestling really was the third, at least the third, I'd say, maybe the third, fourth independent promotion in this country behind Progress, behind ICW, um, arguably behind OTT. But that all depended on whether you could get to Ireland to watch over the top or whether you could source their material online or on DVD. I don't even know if OTT are available on DVD. Um, if they are, I would very much like to own some of their events. But the point of this little tirade was the fact that Defiant Wrestling were a much larger company than IPW UK, and they couldn't keep the doors open. D 
despite having you know namesake after namesake, talent after talent come through their doors and go back, you know, the likes of Mike Hitchman and Primate and Rampage Brown, who you should definitely check out if, if you don't know who he is. They couldn't keep the doors open because of continuing pressure from a declining market, continuing pressure from NXT UK taking their stars and, you know, injuries to main stars and all of this. So if Defiant couldn't do it, you see why it was hard for a promotion like IPW UK to do it when they were just getting smaller and smaller over the years. Now, if you're not familiar with IPW UK, then it has been in existence for roughly 15 years now. It started end of 2003, beginning of 2004, and it has helped to build a huge reputation you know, for stars of today. And I'm not just talking about British stars. I'm talking about worldwide stars, wrestlers, men and women who went on to compete in Japan, who went on to compete in America, who are top names in their respective promotions, you know, even today. So we're talking men like Danny Birch, who, as Martin Stein, was homegrown. He was IPW UK champion for a long time. Dave Mastiff, Mark Haskins, Cesaro visited IPW UK for a very good stint. Um, he was in a tag team here, tag team champion. The brand helped him get exposure in America. Marty Skrull, Zack Sabre Jr., the list, it goes on and on and on. So it is a sad loss to British wrestling. IPW UK will be missed. Um, and I know it sounds like I'm contradicting myself by saying they were a small brand, but they will be missed. But the contribution they have made to British wrestling over 15 years and the stage they gave stars who went on to bigger things to perform on, that can never be underestimated or forgotten. So a sad piece of news, but it is hopeful that they will continue in some shape or form. But they now join a growing list of promotions that have decided that it is not worth it keeping the doors open anymore. Defiant Wrestling and, of course, Shropshire Wrestling Alliance, which closed its doors earlier this year. So to IPW UK, thank you very much for giving the stars of tomorrow somewhere to perform, to hone their craft. And you'll be sadly, sadly missed. And to anyone listening to this, who has never seen an IPW UK show, do look them up on YouTube. Find a DVD if you can. Check them out. They are well worth it. What a great, great loss this is to the British wrestling industry. On November the 15th, during their tapings in Hull, England, NXT UK announced that the brand would be returning to Blackpool on January the 12th for NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2. The event will air live on Sunday, January the 12th, 2020 from the Empress Ballroom. And it now seems this is going to be a yearly happening. So I would expect the same thing in 2021. It, it, it's good to anchor the brand, I think. Back to the place where it all began. Just like WWE used to every 10 years with WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden. Now, though it's not been confirmed on television yet, I have a few spoilers as to matches. So I will give you a few seconds of silence. And if you don't want to know them, whiz this bit forward. Okay, you've had your warning. So, official matches announced for NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2. Joe Coffey will challenge Walter for the WWE United Kingdom Championship. Gallus will defend the NXT UK Tag Team Championships against Imperium, South Wales Subculture and the Grizzled Young Veterans in a fatal four-way tag team ladder match. Kaylee Ray will defend the NXT UK Women's Championship against Tony Storm and Piper Niven in a triple threat match. 
and Trent Seven will battle Eddie Dennis in a grudge match, which has has been building on NXT UK television recently. I know that's only four matches. I expect the fifth match to be Tyler Bate versus Jordan Devlin in a number one contenders match. The winner would go on to dethrone Walter, which has to be Jordan Devlin. But more about Devlin and Bate and Walter in our NXT UK omnibus. As well as the announcement of NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2, which your host will be sitting front row for for the first time. NXT UK also announced a batch of television tapings, which will take us well into the summer of 2020. Tickets are on sale for all of the following now. York on January the 17th and 18th. The brand will return to Coventry on March the 6th and 7th. Bournemouth will host NXT UK on May the 1st and 2nd. And they will return to Glasgow on July the 24th and July the 25th. All of those shows should take us on television well into October next year. So they have got their shit sorted out. NXT UK know where they're going. And I'm glad that there is some clarity around the brand now that it is well over a year old. On November the 24th at the Electric Ballroom in London, Progress held their Chapter 98 card, May I Play Devil's Advocate for a Minute. Here are all the results from said night. FSU defeated Destination Everywhere. Pretty Deadly defeated the NIC. Ginny defeated Millie McKenzie in a number one contenders match for the Progress Women's Championship. Now, last issue, when we announced this match, it was meant to be Ginny versus Tony Storm. Tony Storm pulled out of this event because she chose instead to compete at Survivor Series in the all-women's Survivor Series match as part of Team NXT. That was on the same night as Progress Chapter 98. And as many of you will have seen, she tapped out. Um, Again, just... Just dodgy, dodgy booking for some of the best wrestlers in the world today. Ginny, as a consequence of beating Millie McKenzie at Chapter 98, will receive a Progress Women's Championship match at Chapter 99, with a flake, please, against Mako Satamura. Travis Banks defeated TK Cooper in a no-disqualification, no-countout match. At last, a victory for Travis Banks on UK soil. He has been waiting long enough. David Starr defeated Danny Duggan. Paul Robinson successfully defended the Progress Proteus Championship against Timothy Thatcher in a submission or knockout match. And Jordan Devlin and Scotty Davis defeated Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan to retain the Progress Tag Team Championships. On November the 18th, Progress announced that Eddie Dennis would defend the Progress Unified World Championship against David Starr at Chapter 99 with a flake, please. Now, even though he won the title on September the 15th at Chapter 95 still chasing, this will be Eddie Dennis's first defence of it since he took it from Walter and David Starr in that triple threat match. David Starr, on the other hand, is the current over-the-top world champion after defeating Jordan Devlin at OTT's fifth year anniversary on October the 26th. I am sure this will be a barn burner. I'm sure this is going to be a match of the year contender. And of course, we will have the result of Progress Chapter 99 with a flake, please, coming up in a future issue of Tenant Talks. On November the 26th, Progress announced that Mark Andrews would battle Primate J. Melrose at Chapter 99 with a flake, please. This will be Primate's first match for Progress since Chapter 91 
Prog on the Tyne on July the 6th. And Andrews recently reformed his FSU team with world champion Eddie Dennis, which in turn led Dennis to the Progress Unified World Championship in the first place. Other matches announced for this card. Grizzled Young Veterans versus the Anti-Fun Police. Cassius Ono versus Timothy Thatcher. Kara Noir versus Ilena Dragunov in a two out of three falls match. That is going to be a belter. And Maiko Satomura versus Ginny for the Progress Women's Championship. Shortly before Tenant Talks issue 5 began recording, it was announced by Progress that their first show of 2020 will be Chapter 101, Dalmatians. <laughs> you get what they did there? The event will take place on January the 19th at the Electric Ballroom in London. It feels sad, you know, when we come to the end of one of these. I do so enjoy it. However, it is the end of issue five of Tenant Talks. I can't thank you enough for sticking with me for these last 20 to 25 minutes. It is much appreciated, more than you will ever know. Just a quick reminder, you can find me on Twitter at The Perfect Tenant. You can find Travis on Twitter at The Habiki TMD. Do not forget to check out the Union Smack NXT UK Omnibus Review. That is either up now or will be up in the coming days for you to delve into. Our retro reviews of Survivor Series 1988 and Survivor Series 1996 should be available for you now. There is a, a wealth of a back catalogue for you to delve into until then. The Union Smack Hall of Fame will return. It's looking more in 2020 now, but we will try and get something out for you by Christmas. If not, it will be in the new year. But that will return with Travis inducting Fit Finley. And do not forget to check out The Alternative every week with Travis and Colin as they take you through AEW's baby steps on the road to wrestling superstardom. Also on the channel, you can find Habiki Live, Habiki High Spots, Habiki Quickie, Habiki Pro, Terry Plays, and a load of other goodness. Retro gaming, pro wrestling, whatever you fancy, Travis has got it. I'm taking bets on there being a Habiki Christmas as well. Look out for our Christmas messages. They will be up on the channel in the next few weeks. And I feel like I've been talking forever now. This is meant to be a wind down. We've got so much to haul. Also, do not forget the perfect Christmas presents for the wrestling fan in your life can be found on our online shop at unionsmack.bigcartel.com. You can find the official Union Smack shirt, the official Habiki TMD shirt, the official Reset Button shirt, the official Tenant Talk shirt, and of course the official Union Smack Hall of Fame shirt. We are bound to have some more new items for you in the new year. And of course, if the person in your life loves reading and wrestling, then do purchase a copy of my book, The Undertaker, A Trip Down Death Valley, available now from completelynovel.com. You will also be able to purchase my second book, NXT UK Year One, sometime in the new year when that all comes together. But I've gabbled enough, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, thank you very much. Do take care of yourselves. Enjoy all the Christmas shopping. And until next time, good luck, good night, and goodbye. <laughs>